As you can see, I'm using the same document we completed in the forms training videos. And so you want to be sure to watch those because in this training video, I'm going to be showing you something a bit more advanced by using the if function. Now I cover the if function in my Excel training videos, so if you want it in greater detail, go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, what I'm going to be showing you here should be enough for the purposes of this training video. So the if function means that if somebody types in some specific text in a text field, well, back up here on page one in my form, some specific text in a text field here, or chooses a specific item from a drop down menu, I want to then add some text down below into my form letter. Doesn't that sound cool? Now this text that I want to add, I can either type it in myself after I insert some fields and change the coding thereof, so it will automatically be pulled in when somebody types in some specific text or chooses a specific item again from a drop down menu, or I can have it pull in from auto text. And of course, if you watch my auto text training video, you know what I'm talking about, but I'll show you both. First, let's go ahead and create my auto text here and type in the text that I want added when somebody chooses from my form on page one. Let's say from the drop down menu, this one right here, common software, no. And as you recall, what that means is when we create training videos on software that's not common, that I can't repackage and resell to other clients, and it's just proprietary to that company, well, I'll have to charge him more. So when somebody chooses no here, then down below, before the letter gets printed and goes out, I want to be able to add the following text. Whew, that was fast. And so the text I want added is the software you requested video training on isn't common industry software and will affect the pricing. Please call us at and there's the number. So I want to be able to convert this to auto text or have it as auto text to pull in. To do that, as you recall from the training video, you want to select it. And then come up here, click on the insert tab, go to the text group, click on quick parts, go to auto text, and we want to save it to the auto text gallery. So when I click on it, I can't change the name of it because the name I'd like to give it is common or common knows when somebody chooses common. Well, that's the purpose is to pull in this text here automatically, hence auto text. And the only way that I can change it is that first I have to accept the default, click okie dokie, and then I can change it. Where do I go to change it? As you recall in the Building Blocks training video, under Quick Parts there, which is found on the Insert tab, Text Group, under the Quick Parts, right there, Building Blocks, that you can go ahead and customize it here. Of course, if you can find it, and that was simple, but if you can't find it, you can go ahead and click on the column headers, like Name to sort it alphabetically under Name, or Gallery to sort it there. In which case, that's going to be up at the top because A for auto text is sorting a setting. The A's are up at the top and cool. Go ahead and select it, click on edit. And instead of the name being the software, which what the heck's that? For me, when I reference the auto text, I want to know if I have a lot of auto text, which one I'm looking for. And this one would be common. No. So the common field, you choose no. Then this is the auto text I want to use or reference. Now, remember, you've got to have at least four characters in the name, because if you don't, it's not going to work. I could have gone back to just com, but then that's not going to help me if I have a bunch of auto text and I want to be able to define it more, so common, no. And if it helps, you can go ahead and type it in a description, but I'm going to leave it as common, no. Click okie dokie. Are you sure you want to redefine it, overwrite it? Yes. And there you go, common, no. Let's go ahead and close out and test it by deleting that and then typing in the first four letters of the auto text. The name is common no, so if I just type in C-O-M-M, -M, there's the pop-up that says press enter to insert the auto text and voila, it works. Cool. Let's go ahead and delete that and hit enter. Now next, we want to go ahead and insert a coding so we can reference the auto text so it's pulled in when somebody, or if to be exact, chooses no from the common field. So to insert the if function, as it were, the if field, well, first off, make sure you know where your cursor's at because wherever it's at, that's where it's going to dump the text into. And so if it's right here, well, it's going to be right next to the period. And so it looks like you got to run on there. So you may want to hit the space bar a couple of times if you want to include it in the same paragraph. But when it's hidden, it doesn't matter. But if somebody chooses no, then we want it to flow and look all smooth, right? So just a couple of spaces to start the next sentence here, if I want it right there, and I do. 
then come up here on the insert tab go to the text group we're going to go back to quick parts and choose our if field there's the field and it's sorted alphabetically so we'll scroll down to the eyes for if there you go select it click okie dokie and it adds it now it says there's an error you're missing a test condition well you got to insert it first before you can go ahead and tweak it and say okay once it meets this condition and somebody chooses no then go ahead and pull it in now to go ahead and see the coding so we can work with it so we get rid of that error and actually apply a condition to the if function you can't turn on the show hide codes because well come up here on the home tab to the paragraph group to show it because that's got nothing to do with dynamic fields if you want to edit the coding for a dynamic field then you want to hold down the alt key and hit F9 and it shows all the fields that are changeable updatable like including our cross references here for the title the person's title Mr. Ms. Ms. pulls in there and then their last name and then the software and then the estimated time of arrival and then we've got our if right there cool let's go ahead and scroll down just a bit so I can get it more centered now with us being able to see the code let's work with it and tweak it so we can pull in the auto text when somebody chooses no from the common drop down field now what I want to do there's if and I want to take my cursor and place it in between the two spaces so it's a good idea that we have our codes on so I can insert the coding here now you can go ahead and maybe go off a little bit that what I see somebody else do when I came to learning this training video that I pretty much stay with it because as those of you who know about coding if you're off just a skosh you add an extra dot or you don't have that extra dot it messes everything up in any case this is what I recommend and if you know more than me fabulous go ahead and place it wherever you want but I'm gonna place it in between the two spaces here and I want to insert that reference to the common no the auto text that is by coming up here clicking on the insert tab going back to the text group clicking on quick parts going down to field and we'll go from all categories to since we're talking about references there you go links and references select that so it narrows it down to as you can see selected by default auto text then it has a list of a ton of auto text names but the one that we have begins with the letter C for common no so we just have to scroll down to the C's and there she is go ahead and select it click okie dokie and there we go now what I want to do next is to place my cursor in between the two spaces as you can see it's a good idea we had our codes on so I can see the two dots there the characters representing spaces so it's after the if but before the backslash there go ahead and place your cursor in between those two spaces because we need to add the bookmark to reference the bookmark which is the common software field we're going to insert the field for that the coding for it so we can say if and then reference that field to do that we want to come up here click on the insert tab go to the text group quick parts field and we'll change it from all and go down to links and references and we want the references down below and the name of the bookmark as you can see bookmark name for that field is common software so as you recall in my forms training videos it's a good idea that you name the bookmarks right because if you went with the generic ugh, good luck in understanding which bookmark goes to what field so common software click okie dokie and so to keep in format as far as the merge format goes to make sure we have that in the inner set of brackets as you remember in your algebra that's how the if is going to function hence the if function does the order of operation first set of brackets the any then the outie but we want to make sure that we got the same coding there so common software we want to go ahead and click inside the closing bracket for the reference to the bookmark common software and then you want to type in just what you see here like backslash asterisk and merge format so let's go ahead and do this backslash asterisk and all in caps merge format and then we want to go ahead and click just to the right of that close bracket for the bookmark reference and say equals open quotes no close quotes and I'll explain this in just a minute but I bet it's making sense if you think about it if the bookmark for that field equals no let's go ahead and hit the space bar open quotes then if it's true that it equals no then we want to go ahead and insert so let's come back up here to our quick parts the field which since we were already there links and references we're looking for the auto text 
look over to the right, the auto text name, remember common no, so there's a lot here, it's sorted alphabetically. Let's scroll down to the C's. And there it is, common no, select it, click okie dokie. And then because we had an open set of quotes, we need to close it just on the outside of that wavy bracket after our insert for that auto text, close it. And then we need something to happen if it's false. If they don't choose no, they choose yes. We'll go ahead and do open, close quotes, nothing in between. And now I'll explain. So if the reference to this bookmark, that field, equals no, that they select no, then if it's yes, after it meets that condition, go ahead and do the first set of quotes here. Go ahead and pull in the auto text common no. But if it fails the test, so this is a true statement, yes equals no true. If it fails and equals false, then it goes to the last set of quotes here, and there's nothing between it. So if there's nothing between quotes, nothing gets added. But if I actually had some space there, or spaces, or added anything between the open close quotes, well, that's what it would add if it failed the test. So if somebody chose yes, and you started typing in stuff or added space, then that's what it would add. And that's why I type nothing there, just so it won't do anything if they don't choose no. And now let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. To do that, well, I don't need the codes on. Let's come up here, go to the Home tab, Paragraph Group, turn them off. And we need to hide our dynamic fields. Alt F9. And, well, it's showing it right now, which is interesting, but don't worry. It'll go away once we go ahead and update the form. But I played with it, and so it's showing right now. In any case, if it says that there's still an error on it, you can go ahead and right-click on it and update the field, and it gets rid of the error, or in this case, it updates it, because back up here in the form, I haven't selected one, have I? So it doesn't meet the condition of no, so it cleared it out. In either case, it's not ready for prime. Just right-click to update it, and it will show what it's like before you actually protect your document so you can do the data entry here and select one. So let's go ahead and protect the document. Come back up here, click on the Developer tab, go to the Protect group, click on Restrict Editing, go to Number 2 and make sure you check all that allow only this type of editing in the document. Make sure it's filling in forms. Start enforcing. I'm not going to protect it with the password. I'll just go ahead and click Okie Dokie. So I'm now in Data Entry mode. and You can see Stop Protection. Let's just go ahead and close out. And let's take it for a test drive, select one. If I choose yes, oh, remember that we have to exit the field because it calculates on exit. So you can hit the tab key and, you know, just get out of that field there and scroll down. Did it do anything? No. Okay, here comes the big test. Let's go ahead and choose no. And it calculates on exit. So hit the tab key, just go to the next field. And let's scroll down and see if it does anything. Okay. Well, it's not updating. Word might be having an issue, but it should. Let me just go ahead and do it again. No. And let me click off and go down. There we go. Now it pulls in. Hopefully it's just my Word program that's having an issue, but hey, there may be an update out there to come and fix the bug. Hopefully it's just me. In any case, it pulled in. Isn't that cool? So if I come back up here and I change it, let's see if it goes the other way now, and I choose yes. And I click off and scroll down. Okay, it disappeared. Great, fabulous. Now let's go ahead and stop the protection. Restrict editing, stop it. And as you recall, I didn't type in a password, so none was required. Close out of here. Let's do Alt F9. And let's go back to the code. And let's do a little bit tweakage to our coding here so I can drive the point home about the if function or the if field as a function to help you get more comfortable with what this is about. So again, if that field, common software equals no, we've got the auto text, or you can go ahead and, well, let me click after the open quotes there, and hit the delete key once, selects the entire field, hit it twice, it gets rid of it. So now I have the second set of quotes. That means if it passed the logical test, that means that if it does meet the test, or it does equal no, that is true. So if it's true, it's going to be in that set of quotes if it's false and that. So we've got to have something if it's true, don't we, in that quote. So instead of using the auto text to pull it in with the field, you can just type in whatever you want. And that's what I meant at the beginning of our training video, where you can either do it manually, just type in the set of quotes there, 
for if it's true or just inserting the auto text field. So what would you like to type in? Something like, hey. You'll have to pay more if it's not common and then a happy face because we want people to be happy when they get bad news. In any case, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Come back up here and restrict the editing. Well, we probably better turn off our codes. I don't want to see that. Alt F9. Good point. And then come over here and, well, you can right click and update the field so it disappears. As you can see back up here. Because it meets that, yes, because it's not set to no. In any case, we can't change it to no unless we come over here and enforce the protection. We want to enforce it, no password. And let's go ahead and close out of here. And if we say no, hit the tab key, scroll back down. Okay, it's not pulling in when I hit the tab key. In previous versions of Word, it did. But when I actually click off into another field or this field and I scroll back down, Hey, you'll have to pay more. It's not common. In any case, it works. Now let's go ahead and do one more tweakage to this. So let's go ahead and click Restrict Editing so we can stop the protection, close out of that, do Alt F9 so we can see our codes. And instead of doing a drop down field or referencing it with the if function, how about a regular text field? So instead of common software, let's go ahead and do first name. Now you can do it one of a couple of ways. Since you already have the code in here, you don't have to reinsert the code. You just need to update the bookmark here from common software to, well, whatever the bookmark name you gave it for the first name field. You can double click and it's first underscore name. So click cancel, scroll back down. And we can just go ahead and replace this right there with first underscore name. Now you can do it that way or of course, you can do it the other way if you don't have a code to update. With it selected, I can come back up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Text Group, click on Quick Parts to Field, and we want to go to our References here, and it brings up the bookmarks, and it's going to be First Name. Go ahead and select that, click Okie Dokie, and I'll insert it. But since I already had a reference of a field within the form, I could just update it to a different bookmark, the First Name. Cool. And then for the first name, instead of no, because I don't think anybody has the first name of no, but let's do something fun, like if the first name is Harry, then if it does equal that, then for being true, we've got our first set of quotes. If it's false, then there's nothing there. But if it's true, and it is Harry, you can say, hey, leave that there. Hey, it's great to have you on board as our client. And if it doesn't meet that condition, or it's false, then you can say something like, I know, who's going to put that in their form letter to send off to somebody who doesn't have the first name of Harry? Well, the point is, is that when it's false and it doesn't meet a condition, then instead of leaving it blank, you can have something else. And I want to show you that if it has something else, that it would actually pull that something else in. In any case, let's go ahead and Alt F9. And we can right click on that and update the field. So, well, right now it's not Harry because there's nobody in the field. Or more specifically, Harry's not in the first name field. So if you don't have Harry in there, everybody's going to have, hey, you're not Harry. Oh, that's nice. In any case, let's go ahead and come up here, click on the developer tab, go to protect, restrict editing, allow only this type of editing check, filling in forms. Okay, you've got it right. Enforce out a password. And so right now, if there's nothing in there, it says, hey, you're not Harry, right? Let me double click. But if I type in, well, let me close out of here because that's just taking up valuable space. If I type in Harry and I hit the tab key, okay, let's see if the tab works because it calculates on exit. So I exited the field by tabbing out of it. Well, let's see. Let's scroll down to see if that works. Hey, it's great to have you on board as our client. Okay, it works. In any case, it's great to have you on board as our client. Isn't that cool? Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.